Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A regional workshop aims to equip countries with the skills to better measure standard of living and poverty. The ECCB unveils a blueprint of its development strategy for 2020 and beyond. New methods being introduced to fishers to safeguard them while at sea. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. A regional workshop on qualitative data analysis has sought to equip institutions across the region with the skills to measure the standard of living and poverty, going beyond simply measuring gross domestic product and to measure the health of the population. This as the OECS Commission undertakes the Enhanced Country Poverty Assessment Project. The project is being done in collaboration with the Caribbean Development Bank and has brought st regional stakeholders to St. Lucia for the workshop. Director of Economic Affairs and Regional Integration at the OECS Commission, Jacqueline Emanuel, says the project depends heavily on data and statistics. Traditionally, measures of poverty and of standard of living that inform policy formulation have been quantitative. For example, household expenditure, unemployment rate, GDP per capita, and poverty expressed as income level. In recent times, however, there has been a thrust to move beyond not just quantitative measures of poverty, but also beyond measures that link poverty to only income. No doubt you have heard about the call to eventually measure well-being and go beyond GDP, because over time, the limitations of GDP as a welfare indicator has become more and more apparent. Emmanuel says that having qualitative evidence to complement quantitative data helps us to understand the underlying cause of poverty. GDP does not adequately capture our real stories. Many of our countries in this region are classified as middle income based on our GDP per capita. However, GDP does not capture our vulnerabilities. And the fact that, for example, every year from June to December, our economic and social fabric is threatened by adverse weather conditions including hurricanes, heavy flooding, and storms. The timing, purpose, and value of the PPA training warrants repetition. Understanding poverty from the perspective of those who are experiencing poverty gives us tremendous insight into the real life challenges. It enables us to better understand well-being, and it allows us to use the valuable in information to design targeted and timely interventions and poverty reduction policies. The Caribbean Development Bank's Albert Ellis spoke of the organization's approach to the project. The bank's approach to this program is based essentially on the following principles. One, that poverty is multidimensional and should be examined in a comprehensive manner, and we heard that earlier. The assessment of poverty should be highly participatory an opportunity should be given for a cross-section of the society to participate in this process. So it's not only about an interviewer or an enumerator coming to your door to collect information from you. It is about having opportunities to do focus group discussions, to have community meetings, to hear the voices of those persons who are deprived. Very importantly, as is set out in the objectives of this workshop, there's a recognition that local capacity must be developed as part of the program. And in doing so, participants must be equipped across the various institutions and organizations with the requisite skills to conduct future poverty assessments and to monitor changes in quantitative and qualitative poverty indicators over time. And that was a representative from the Caribbean Development Bank, Albert Ellis. Building on Sir Arthur Lewis's economic model of industrialization by invitation, the ECCB governor, Timothy Antoine, is providing insights into a blueprint on a forward-looking development strategy for 2020 and beyond. Antoine was the featured speaker at the Sir Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture as part of the 2020 Nobel Laureate Festival. St. Lucia's Nobel Laureate Festival is being held under the theme Celebrating Excellence, Vision 2020. The festival aims to celebrate the island's two Nobel Laureates, Sir Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Walcott. 
The Sir Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture is one event on the calendar of activities, and this year was delivered by the Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine. The governor, standing on Sir Arthur Lewis's model, industrialization by invitation, some 70 years later offered some thoughts on a forward-looking development strategy for 2020 and beyond. Antoine explained that while some progress has been made in the region, it is still not where it ought to be, and therefore socio-economic transformation is necessary. He highlighted some of the indicators. So remember the target for growth in our region is 5%. That's our target approved by the Monetary Council, finance ministers, most of whom are prime ministers. 5%. Not since the 1980s have we hit that target when we were averaging 6%. And if you look at the dark blue line, which is ECCU, St. Lucia is the light blue, you will see that that line has come down and down and down. And it coincides with the loss of preferential access, sugar and bananas, it coincides with countries that are contracting more debt. It coincides with loss of concessional financing as we graduated from low income to middle income. And it also coincides with some fiscal profligacy. And we have to acknowledge that at times the governments have not been on their best behavior where fiscal matters are concerned. The governor attributed this to a number of factors, including low and declining productivity, limited fiscal space, which has constrained the size of the government's capital programs, inordinate delays in the completing of major projects, and slow implementation of structural reforms, including legislative reforms to address the issue of access to credit. Antoine, highlighting the need for a technological transformation, explained the importance of legislative reforms to the growth of a country's economy and improving the lives of its citizens. A guy who is fishing ought to be able to fish, use his smartphone and take a picture of the fish while still on the ocean, have that sent, uploaded and sent, so that by the time he reaches the shore, that is already sold and the money is in his account. That is the appropriate use of technology for the fisherman. So my point is that technology can enable all sectors. So this, this nonsense narrative that we somehow leave in our culture behind, that's not true. That's a nonsense narrative. Technology can enable all sectors, all sectors, to be transformed and to new business models to emerge if we are ready to embrace its potential. Held at the Finance Administrative Building on the 23rd of January 2020, the lecture was entitled Socio-Economic Transformation by Invitation and Innovation. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. A week-long session for the training of trainers in fishers at sea safety took place at the Belgiou Hotel last week. The session's aim was to teach and bring awareness to new methods implemented for the safety of fishermen. The Ministry of Agriculture's Amanda Faye Clark tells us more. Fisher's safety is at the forefront of the fisheries department agenda. Countless fishermen have lost their lives due to the lack of training in proper safety precautions while out at sea. The fisheries department, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and the Fish Safety Foundation of New Zealand culminated a week-long intensive training workshop to give various stakeholders in the regional fisheries sector the training necessary to be better equipped to train other fishers and colleagues. Chief Executive Office of the Fish Safety Foundation, Eric Holliday, whose organization was procured to facilitate the training, says, One of the achievements realized thus far under this intervention, which forms part of the ongoing Sisi for Fish project of the Department of Fisheries, is the launching of the online platform, which will place timely information and the latest developments in safety practices in the hands of fisheries practitioners and trainers. The work that we do through our foundation is directly funded by a number of organizations and because we are luckily the, the one-of-a-kind organization in this field looking at, at fishing safety globally, um, the FAO had heard about us, they then contacted us, uh, spoke about this mission and we were really interested and, and after negotiations we agreed that I would come here for two or three visits, we would speak with officials, speak with officials, speak with, with, with trainers 
and get some idea of, of the level of training and the materials available to trainers for the safety of fishermen. We did that last year and then spent some time putting together a new package. And the purpose of this workshop is to introduce that to these trainers and then assist them on an ongoing basis to deliver it. We, we've committed to providing information on a continuous basis and updating that. But it's really about developing the skills for the trainers here and then providing them with the tools to carry out the task. Regional coordinator of the Sisi for Fish project, Iris Monero, explains that any intervention which will safeguard the interests of fishers will have far-reaching benefits for the subsector. This training is part of the portfolio of activities of CC for Fish. So as a result of climate change, we're expecting um, you know, an incre increased frequency as well as increased intensity of storms and hurricanes in the region. And as fishing is already known as one of the most dangerous occupations in the world, uh, that is only going to add to the unsafety of fishers in the region. So one of the aspects that we're working on uh, under the Sea for Fish project is to improve safety at sea for fisher folk. Sisi for Fish was launched in the Eastern Caribbean to address climate adaptive strategies to protect, preserve and build resilience of its marine and fisheries resources. For St. Lucia, this translates to the introduction of measures for the safety and security of all fisheries livelihoods and amendments to policies that allow fisher folk empowerment and which guide the future development of the fisheries economy. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Ficklock reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. The Independence 41 Gospel Extravaganza 2020 kicks off our independence celebrations on Saturday, 1st February 2020 at 7 p.m. at the National Cultural Center under the theme, Now is the Time, Let's Praise, Reflect, Love. Give thanks. Come join us for a night of inspirational pieces featuring gospel groups, singers, dancers, and musicians from various denominations around the island. Take in an amazing production building on the origin of Negro spirituals as we worship together. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. The Victoria Hospital is continuing work to improve the quality of endoscopic procedures to its patients by undertaking hands-on endoscopy training. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. Nurses and surgeons in the endoscopy unit and the operating theater recently participated in an endoscopy workshop aimed at expanding their skills and capacities to incorporate more advanced endoscopic techniques at the Victoria Hospital. Consultant surgeon at the Victoria Hospital, Dr. Ali Charles, says she is very pleased with the training as it allows them to enhance the quality of endoscopy at the hospital. Dr. Maria has come to sort of facilitate our endoscopy um, this week. Um, in the past, he's come and done endoscopy, um, but what he's done on this occasion is watch us do endoscopy. And it, it, what it means is that it means that we have gone to the next level. We're able to do more advanced procedures. Um, and he's acted as our mentor this week so that um, we can do it. He, he knows that the, the work that he's put in over the years has come to fruition and he can just watch us do the work now. Consultant gastroenterologist at Bradford Teaching Hospitals, Dr. Suleiman Moria says, He's very satisfied with the level of endoscopic work undertaken by the doctors in St. Lucia. In this workshop, uh, my main aim was to provide support for the local doctors. So over the years, the local doctors have made fantastic improvement in their endoscopy skills. And this workshop's aim was purely to take it to the next level. So for example, I have been able to support Dr. Charles in doing some polypectomies and Dr. Kabiye in doing some advanced procedures called ERCPs. The Bradford Teaching Hospitals also donated equipment for the endoscopy unit and operating theatre of the Victoria Hospital to the tune of 500,000 EC dollars. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The life's work of veteran Calypsonian Marilyn Lady Lynn Baptist 
was put on display on Thursday, January 30th, 2020, at an exhibition highlighting her 30-year career. The exhibition formed part of this year's Nobel Laureate Festival. Let's take a look. 30 years in Calypso has been ups and downs and good and bad and I've enjoyed it. I've had my ups and downs and I've been able to conquer it. So as a, as a full grown woman, the 30 years of my life that I have placed in, put into Calypso, um, I think it is something that the young people should try and follow. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. St. Lucia! Are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the Sab in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let's show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. Merci au temps, mes chers. Monsieur, madame, département, une responsabilité pour l'information en gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS, en ce moment, télévision nationale NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle Arqueur. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Quand le gouvernement a fait une préparation pour présenter le budget pour l'année 2020 pour 2021, le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour le développement économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, a fait un plan pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine, ça c'est 2021. Il y a aussi un plan, selon Honorable Guy Joseph, c'est une démarche qui est en place pour réviser et explorer toutes les possibilités qui sont available pour établir une autorité des opérations avion qui est très capable pour poursuivre des gros services que cette ici mérite. Ministre Joseph, vous remarquez qu'ils savent que cette ici, c'est même cette pays qui arrive là, au ICS. Mais, j'ai oué, c'est divers trois cas seulement cette ici qui a expérimenté. Alors, le gouvernement, j'ai déjà exploré l'autre possibilité. En Europe, Joseph, qui a aussi conseillé toute cette ici pour participer et coopérer à Census 2020. Selon M. Joseph, c'est une formation que le gouvernement a amassé, qui a facilité pour faire plan pour ce temps qui peut venir. Mais cela dit qu'il est très concerné parce que cette ci nous en fait blesse. Là, il vient pour plan pour ce temps qui est derrière, qui va venir. Si vous êtes pour le ministère de, pour le développement économique, Claudia Simonuel, notez que le ministère a suivi le plan de développement présentement pour aider à gérer la route de finances pour le développement du pays. Cette ci est tellement. Cette ci j'ai suivi le plan pour le traitement flou, comme la mauvaise maladie de Corona qui a continué à se à la terre. Par rapport à l'Organisation de la Santé mondiale, c'est dit la mauvaise maladie nous voit cela, qui a levé tête li en pays Chine, j'ai assumé en neuf autres pays. Pour ce cela, les autorités en cette ci qui travaillent pour et les agences régionales et internationales qui ont poursuivi de la meilleure manière pour adresser la maladie de Corona. Chef officier médical à cette ci Dr. Sharon Belma George, déclare que le corona a une cause de monde pour souffrir et puis go wim avec l'autre, ça qui est plus grave qu'un problème d'aspiration. Il y a un ça aussi souffrir et puis mauvaise maladie, mauvaise mal tête, la fièvre, et un cas qui est très critique, problème de pneumonie qui ça l'occasionne la mort. Selon Dr. Belma George, de gwe wisla pour qu'on ho en wisho karibla, mais le département de santé a procédé et puis toute précaution qui est nécessaire en préparation pour réduire à ce force maladie à la population de cette ci C'est le Dr. Belma George, toute préparation j'ai en place en façon éducation pour travailler la santé et le public là aussi. Pour la route pays, c'est l'hôtel là et l'autre place qui est très risquable. En même temps, 
euh, département santé qui a conseillé le public là pour toujours laver la main, couvrir la bouche et puis un mouchoir, ça c'est un mouchoir poche, et bien servir tout ça avec la main qui vous s'agit après. Les gens qui ont été en train de tous ces qui ont été loin de personne qui a montré si nous qui a été en train de on est pour faire ça, et bien, si on est, on est plus de problèmes et puis de l'inspiration, on est pour rester en train de se faire. Monsieur, madame, ce programme de l'aujourd'hui, nous avons fini et continuer et puis adresse le Premier ministre Chasné pour l'année 2020 et comme ça là. Nous avons mis attention à la contribution au service de santé pour cette ici. Le Premier ministre Chasné a parlé du commitment pour faire assurer que tout cette ici, monsieur, le service de santé a d'ailleurs redégoué. On a le Premier ministre Chasné fait pour mettre la qui. Le public là, ça a inspiré, ça a inspiré pour que le grand hôpital ONK commence à opération pour le premier quartier l'année de ça là. Sur le premier ministre, le premier ministre de la majorité, c'est l'équipement qui était fort. Il a trouvé un jeu, et bien, il a déjà replacé. Le premier ministre, là, on a ce qui, pour cette fois, il a une facilité de 90 couches pour l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Travail chaque affaire, sérieusement, pour adresser toutes ces fautes-là qui étaient existées en premier bâtissement de l'hôpital Sala. Faciliter neuf là, qui a les gens qui sont malades, ni pour tenir en activité à l'hôpital la même, et yo qui a en brisé le traitement seulement pour un moment. Le Premier ministre Chasné promet que tout de suite, il est possible de mettre toutes ces vieux mémoires de l'hôpital Sala qui a existé depuis l'année 2009, de ça, ça c'est les difficultés de valiser. Le Premier ministre Chasné remercie le ménagement et le travail à l'hôpital Saint-Jude pour passer sur et pour continuer pour continuer le service dans le haut degré. Le Premier ministre a annoncé que le travail a commencé tout de suite à ce pôle clinique d'un et le gouvernement a fait possible pour le pôle clinique Gozile au pays pour plus d'éditeurs à présent. Il dit aussi plonger en place pour bâtir un centre de santé nouveau en village Aslaoui et village Mikou. Ce qui est encore plus important, c'est le Premier ministre Chasné, c'est le service de santé universel. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que le gouvernement a entré à un agrément et puis Banque mondial pour renforcer le système de santé pays pour ça pour tuer un meilleur service de santé. À part de ça, le Premier ministre Chasné a annoncé que 33 centres de santé à pays qui ont toutes les facilités nécessaires pour détecter les mauvaises maladies et pour prendre la situation. C'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé une nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je vous remercie de considérer que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle accueil. Je vous remercie tout le monde. Un bon fin de la semaine. Je vous remercie de vous présenter. Michel. Merci, Opel Primus. Et ici, regardez ce qui se passe pour nous, weather-wise. Fair and hazy becoming cloudy at times, with a few scattered showers over the southern portion of the region. Elsewhere, fair to partly cloudy and hazy, with brief isolated showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will continue to generate light to moderate easterly winds across the Eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Weak and stable conditions will cause a few scattered showers to develop over the southern portion of the region during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbour, low at 2.15 p.m., high at 8.19 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, low at 3.42 p.m., high at 9.26 p.m. Seas, moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 6.31 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.